And could I get a volunteer that's bold enough to stand up in front of people and do a little experiment? Just a bottle of water. It's all, all you have to do is hold a thing of bottle of water. Anybody want to do that? It is the 8 o'clock. Oh, okay, good. All right, cool. Y'all can both do it. I got two bottles if you want. All right, Triska. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to just hold this bottle of water just straight out like that, okay? Okay. And, and we're going to check in with you about this, how's, how it's going. All right, great. Thank you. Look at that. Bold uh, person helping out volunteering. Thank you so much for be, your faith in, in me. Okay. So that's the bo- this is the experiment. Now I'm going to preach a little bit, and then I'm going to turn back to Triska in just a minute. So let's talk about the gospel. So today Jesus goes uh, to Simon Peter's house. Uh, he just called the, the fishermen, the four fishermen, uh, Simon and Andrew, James and John. And so he just started. We're in the first chapter of Mark's gospel. So he started his mission uh, in Simon Peter's mother-in-law is ill with a fever. So that's kind of the setting. This picture, if you look on the slide, you'll see the traditional site of Peter's house. Um, now, they've done an archaeological dig, and you can kind of see the front, the foreground shows some of the things they've excavated. And in the background, you actually see a big church. And that church was built over what uh, traditionally they think might have been Peter's house. We don't really know, but it, it's, it's in Capernaum, which is uh, on the sea, right along the Sea of Galilee. Beautiful, beautiful place if you ever get a chance. Triska, I'm going to check in with you. How are you doing? Doing good. You're doing good? Okay, great. Awesome, awesome. Okay, You're, this is going to make sense in a little bit. Okay, so then Jesus came up and he took Simon Peter's mother-in-law and lifted her up. And pay attention to that language, lifted her up. Because you'll see this phrase a lot in the Gospels. Uh, in another healing of Mark, he lifted another person up. Uh, the Virgin Mary speaks about Jesus in that beautiful, the Magnificat, her wonderful poem or song, uh, speaks of Jesus lifting up the lowly. And that's exactly what's going on in today's gospel, lifting up somebody who is ill and in need. Uh, and he also speaks of his own crucifixion uh, in, in a different gospel in John as himself being lifted up. So we'll see this language of being lifted up a lot of times. And then Jesus heals her. There's a beautiful icon in this picture of Jesus healing Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Now, I've talked in the past about how there's always connections in the Gospels, right? Between the beginning and the end and things like that. And you might remember Jesus, uh, Peter later denies Jesus three times, right? That's a famous thing. And and this is the passage. You don't have to read the whole thing. But it's basically about the denial of, uh, of Jesus. And um, some scholars think that Peter did this to save his own skin, to say, you know, because he could have gotten in trouble if he would have said he was a follower of Jesus. But other scholars believe that the real reason why Peter denied Jesus three times, he never forgave him for healing his mother-in-law. That was actually the reason. <laughs> we love our mother-in-laws. I'm just, wow, I got the eight o'clock crowd to laugh. Okay, thank you, Lord. My life is complete. No, no, not really. Just a joke. Okay, so he heals her, the fever leaves, and then what does she do? She begins to serve. Now that serve is a really interesting word. It actually is where we get the word deacon from. Diakoneo. She began to wait on them, serve them. This is, so in the Episcopal Church, there's three orders of uh, clergy. You can be a deacon, a priest, or a bishop. Those are the three orders. But actually everybody ordained in the Episcopal Church you're ordained as a deacon first. Some transition and become priests and others become bishops. And so it's a way of serving. And it's something we're, we're all called to, to serve in different ways. But I think that's important. It's also important to remember, uh, you might have uh, friends who say, oh my goodness, you know, deacons, that's a, you, you might have heard this somewhere uh, from, from somebody in the, the denomination. Oh, only men can be deacons. Well, let me just point out that if you read the Bible right there in Romans 16, we have Deacon, female deacons, Phoebe, one of Paul's uh, apostles, and Simon Peter's mother-in-law, also deaconing. So I think it's important we remember that, that that's already there early on. Uh, they, they feed widows and others in poverty, and so they do a lot of important things. But just wanted to point that out if you ever want to kind of pry it to your more fundamentalist friends who have different, you know, worldviews. Um, so, so here's what happens. Uh, Jesus heals her, and word gets out. It's a small town, Right? And that evening, uh, at sundown, all the sick people, they start coming to Jesus. And they're gathered around the door. Can you imagine this little bitty house and everybody's just piling up. They're in lines and and Jesus is serving and helping. How are you doing over there, Triska? 
Is it getting? Uh, I'm starting. It's to start, starting to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, you're doing. You're you're hanging in there. You know, it's one pound. The wa thing of water is a little bit over one pound. So you're doing great. You're doing great. Just hang it. Let, if you if you get if you need to stop, you just stop. Okay. It's, so Jesus helped people from all over the city. Now it's interesting because earlier that day he's at the synagogue healing people, and then he goes over and uh, makes a house call to Simon Peter's mother-in-law, and now the whole town. So he's doing this all day long. Like Triska, he's getting tired, you know. And when you're exhausted, you have an option, right? Jesus could have pressed on and healed more people because there were more people who wanted it, or he could have got away and got some rest. And what does he do? In the morning, he goes out when it's still dark, goes to a deserted place, and he prays. He got away. He got away even though he's busy doing all kinds of amazing things. And the disciples, they search for him. And you uh, always feel like some of the stuff could have happened in Texas, right? Simon and his companions, they hunted for him. I mean, they're literally searching for them. Where are you at, Jesus? Oh, my goodness, I need you. They, in their mind, this is a crisis. Where is Jesus? We need him. But in his mind, he's just going to get away and pray. He needs the rest. Just like your right arm probably needs it right now. <laughs> okay. You can rest now. You can, you, you can call. Okay. So um, I'm going to make a point here in a second. So he had a choice, right? So Jesus could return to where he is loved, praised, and wanted. Right? He's a popular guy. He's healing. He's the most popular guy in town. Wouldn't it be kind of nice to go back there where everybody is like, we are so happy for you. Or you can leave town where people might reject you and hate you. Which choice? I mean, most of us, I'm going to go with A, right? But no, he leaves. Jesus leaves town, and I think it's important to remember, while there were still people who wanted him. Right? And why? Well, he says, I got to proclaim this message over there also. Because if I don't leave town, I'm not going to get to go to that next town. So my calling, Jesus is saying, means I need to go out. And so he knows his mission. He doesn't try to do it all. And he wasn't afraid to say no. That's hard, isn't it? Sometimes saying no. Because sometimes if we don't say no to one thing, we can't say yes to something else. Now, the water bottle, we all agree, not heavy, one pound, right? Right? But over time, it was, it was hurting you, right? And we've probably experienced this. You ever do this? Uh, they don't have these as much, but they used to have those big milk gallons you could carry with your hand. You remember those? And you walk around the grocery store, you're like, I just need one thing, right? And then 10 minutes later, your arm is about to fall off because you went and got six other things and you can't carry it. It's not because you're weak. It's because all of us wear down over time. Stress is like that, isn't it? It's not about the weight of the water. It's about how long you have to hold it. And so that is Jesus' way of reminding us that he took breaks. He defined his boundaries. Uh, the concept of Sabbath is huge in the Bible. It's about resting, rejuvenating, and letting God fill us back up. The passage from Isaiah, I'm going to go click through a couple of verses, but it's a beautiful one. Um, and, and we start with the Lord is everlasting, the creator of the, of, the, of the earth, right? And he talks about not growing faint or weary, that, that God doesn't wear out like, quite like we do, um, and gives power to those who need it. So when we turn to God, we find strength. And that's that poetic line about youths will faint and, not, and be weary. The young will be exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. So when we set down the water bottle and we rest, when we come in prayer, when we say, God, I can't handle this. I need your, your inspiration. I need something from you. I need patience, strength, courage, whatever it is. Those are the moments that... And this is this famous passage. They shall mount up like eagles' wings, right? Like wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. So, we live in a society, I think we can all agree, is restless, right? 24-hour news cycle kind of messed us up a little bit, didn't it? And, that, and that's for those of the social media, oh my goodness, all the time. You've already missed, since we started worship, you probably missed out on a whole bunch of things. It's okay. 
you're still doing all right, you know? It's, oh, society teaches us, coaches us, makes profit and money off of us being restless. So how do we take care of ourselves? And that is the question. Because our world's not going to do that for us. We have to take that responsibility. We have to find a way to set the water bottle down. Jesus rested and showed a great example in today's gospel. He said no, even, so that he could say yes to something else. And Isaiah reminds us that renewal comes from the Lord. May we remember these lessons and apply them in our lives. Amen.